In a previous video, I showed you how to calculate the future value for multiple cash flows. And I provided an example, and I want to do that same example here, but I want to do it in Excel. And if you haven't seen the previous video, I'll post the link in this video so you can go back and look at it. I have uh, actually drawn the time cash flow diagram, which may help you to better understand how this works. But here, the reason we want to do it in Excel is it's easier to do the calculation. It's a good way to familiarize ourselves with Excel, which is a really powerful tool for doing financial analysis. And it also allows us to set it up with a formula so we can change the interest rate and see how future value is affected by a change in the interest rate. So it gives us an idea, of, it gives us a chance to understand the effect of changes in interest rates on future value, but without having to redo all the calculations by hand. Now, if you look at this formula here, in some ways it looks a little funny, and the way you have to calculate future value, the what we're going to assume here is you're going to get $2,000 a year for five years, and as soon as you make that last deposit here, we're going to add up what's in your account. Now, so this essentially is already in its future value. It's already going to be two thousand dollars okay we don't have to do any adjustment no interest is going to be earned on it but we want to figure out how to put a formula in well the cash flow in year n that happens to be year five here is the cash flow in year n times one plus the interest rate raised to the n minus n power five minus five power anything raised to a power of zero equals one so we just get this cash flow if we jump down here to uh, year four, for example, how many years of interest are we going to earn? It's just one, right, from year four to year five. So the cash flow in year n minus one, right, five minus one is four, is going to be raised to the power of n minus the difference of n minus one. So this is going to be five minus the 5 minus 1, which is 4 here, so it's going to be raised to the first power. So you can see the formula seems to look okay. Let's check the last, or let's check the cash flow in year 1. This is going to grow for 1, 2, 3, 4 periods. So the cash flow in year 1 is going to be cash flow in year 1 times 1 plus the interest rate raised to the n minus 1 power, 5 minus 1, which is 4. So let's see if we can't put these future value factors in here and then we'll multiply them together to get the future value. So here we're going to put in the future value factor and the future value factor is going to be equal to 1 plus the interest rate which is in cell B3 I put a dollar sign in so that when I copy the formula down it stays locked at row 3 because you notice there's nothing in cell B4 and cell B5 it happens to be a, a label or a title okay so we don't want it to move we want it to stay here okay and we're going to raise it to a power that's that hat key and what's the formula going to be the formula is going to be n is 5 here and it's going to be minus the number of years or uh, the year that we get the cash flow in this case we get the cash flow in year one and that's in cell A6 Okay. I don't put a dollar sign in because when I copy it down, I want this to be 5 minus 2, so this grows for 1, 2, 3 periods. Okay, so, oops, I've got that formatted incorrectly. This should be actually just a number, so let me format that cell for you. And you go to format cell, and these are just numbers, and we'll put in no five decimal places. Okay, so you can see the future value factor. So if you happen to have, uh, if you put um, some money, you put a dollar in the account earning 10% for four years, you'll have a dollar 46 and dollar uh, 46.10. So let me cap, uh, copy that down. Okay, notice this is just one so that when we multiply this together we'll get 2000 so what's the future value of the cash flow 
just multiply these two together. And so this is going to be equal to B6 times C6. And if we copy this down, these are the different cash flows. If we want to know the total, we add them up as the formula gives us here. So there's an auto sum feature, sum it up, and we get $12,210.20. If we want to use the Excel formula, we can also figure out the future value of the cash flows. The future value formula, FV, we need the rate, which is in cell B3. Again, put that dollar sign in. Number of periods is actually, as we said before, 5 minus what's in A6. Okay, there's no payment. Payment means it's an annuity. This is actually an annuity, which is a stream of equal payments made at equal intervals, but we're not calculating it like that. And the present value happens to be in cell B6. So let's see if we do that. We see we get the same number. Excel gives you a negative number. If you put in a positive cash flow, you get a negative future value. Uh, your financial calculator also does it that way. And again, you see the numbers are all the same. They just happen to be negative. And if you sum it up, again, you get the same, same numerical uh, answer. So this is a good way to do the calculation. And here, if we wanted to change the interest rate, let's see what happens if the interest rate is higher, 12%. Notice we get a higher future value. That obviously makes sense, right? If we can invest our money at a higher interest rate, we should have more. And let's say if we had a lower rate, we'd have a smaller amount here. But it allows us to see the calculations, and it's actually kind of nice to do it this way at least once. Sure, you can use the future value formula that Excel gives you, but this is kind of a black box. You don't know what it's doing. Here you know what it's doing. It's taking 2,000 and multiplying it by 1 plus the interest rate to the fourth power. Taking this amount and multiplying it times 1 plus the interest rate raised to the third power, etc. So it's a great way to understand how future value is actually calculated without having to do all the tedious calculations by hand. And it's also a good way to get familiar with the formulas in Excel.